Hello, this is Tim DeLeon from Focus First, and this short tutorial is on how to combine duplicate listings. Now, I'll be doing this tutorial on a Mac, but it works the same as a, the same way on a PC. If there's any differences, I'll be sure to point them out. So first of all, let's talk about what we're referring to when we say duplicate listings. Let's take a look at the odds of selling chart here. Notice the number of properties that have been withdrawn or expired in this data set. It's likely that some of these properties may have been taken off the market and put right back on at a lower price, or maybe even the same price. So why would a realtor take a property off the market and put it right back on? This is generally done by realtors to make the property look like a new listing. In some MLSs, it will reset the days in the market and it may create the perception that it's a new listing. Of course, with today's technology and in today's environment, many of the MLSs will easily show the showing history or the listing history. So realtors can easily view the accumulative days in the market in addition to the current days in the market. So it may not really accomplish what the realtor is trying to do anyway. That being the case, we've had lots of requests from realtors that they would love it if we could combine the two MLS sheets, both the expired or withdrawn property with the corresponding active or sold property into one MLS sheet. This would mean we would show less properties withdrawn and expired, and we would reset the days in the market to reflect the combined time for both listings. While our default is to show the exact same information as your MLS shows, which I believe is important because it allows you to make sure that we are including the same data that you exported, the visual pricing system can combine duplicate listings for you. All you need to do is to determine how long the property should be off the market before you'd want to consider them two separate listings and set the duplicate listings interval to that value. So let me show you how to do that. And then I'm going to show you how that impacts your results. First of all, let's start from the, the beginning again and let's read in some data. Now I'm going to read in this in the file that I exported earlier. Here's the file right here. Okay, the data is read in. Now let's take a closer look at the odds of selling chart. Notice that for 2013, we have seven properties that have been withdrawn or expired. Now if we go to the MLS data form, we can see the exact properties that were used to create the odds of selling chart. Additionally, if we double click on the address header field, right here, we can sort on the addresses. Now let's take a closer look at what we have here. Let's go down to the bottom and take a look at the last address here, which is 10637 North Lowell Drive. Take a look at the MLS numbers. You can see this is the first one and then they go down. And then let's take a look at the dates. This property was here was on the market 149 days and was taken off the market on 328, 2013 and was withdrawn. And then you can see it was put right back on the market and then after 82 days, which is almost about three months, it was taken off the market on June 18, 2013, and then it was on the market for another 186 days. Then it was taken off the market January 7, 2014. Okay, so let's set the duplicate listing interval. To set the duplicate listing interval value, you will need to bring up the configuration menu. To get access to the Focus First menu items on the PC, go to the top menu items, and select the add-in menu. Once you select the add-in menu, you'll see there's a Focus First drop-down right below there. If you click on Focus First, all the Focus First menu items will appear. On a Mac computer, the way you bring up your configuration menu is to move your cursor right here in the middle part. You can see the pop-up comes right here. Then you right-click and select Configure. Once you have your configuration menu up, you can see right here is a duplicate listing interval and you can see it says enter the number of days. Now the way this works is that whatever value you set here is used as the number of days between the two listings. So if we set this value to 30, and let's do that, what this means is that if there are 30 days or less between the two listings on the same address, the visual pricing system will combine them into one listing. It will keep the most recent listing and increase the number of days to reflect the total number of days for both listings. Once you set the configuration parameter, you must read in the file for it to take effect. 
Also, once you set the parameter, it will stay set until you change it. OK, we've saved the parameters. Let's read in the same file. There's the file. OK, now let's look at the odds of selling chart and compare it to the previous. Notice that the sold properties are the same as well as the active properties, but withdrawn expired has decreased. This is because the properties that were withdrawn or expired and put right back on were combined into the corresponding sold active, or it could have been combined into another withdrawn property. Let's look at the MLS data sheet, and we'll sort this as we did before. Great, now take a look at the property down here on North Lowell Drive. What was previously three MLS sheets has now been combined into one. It's taken the latest and most recent MLS number. And you can see we've combined all the days in the market. And there we have the final result. So there you have it. Now you know how to merge duplicate MLS sheets if you like. And I can tell you in our MLS area, we rarely use this feature. In most cases, we want to count every property that's been withdrawn or expired, even if the realtor just puts it right back on the market. From our perspective, it's an at-bat. It was a strike, and we want to reflect that. However, we do realize that this feature can be very useful in some MLS areas, and that may include yours. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to watch some of our other videos, and don't forget to press the Like button below.